hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a graduation frame. Well, after years of hard work, my youngest daughter graduated from university. Uh, work paid off to get her BA and a double major in psychology and sociolo sociology. <laughs> her father can't even pronounce it. But what do you get for all those years of hard work and those thousands upon thousands of dollars in tuition fees? You get a piece of paper that says that you're qualified. That's what you get. Okay, so what's the deal? The deal is that this piece of paper is eight and a half by 13 inches. Not a single conventional frame on the market would fit it, but don't worry. Do not worry, because the university in their kindness is nice enough to provide you the opportunity to purchase one of their specially sized and specially branded uh, graduation frames for, oh, quite a fee. You'd think after all those thousands of dollars, they would just give it to you framed, but that's not the case. Everybody wants to make a buck. Well, ha! The joke's on them because this cute little graduate happens to have a woodworking father. And that woodworking father is gonna make a frame and he's gonna show you guys how to do it today. And it all starts off with cutting a piece of MDF or hardboard for the backer board. So what I have here is a quarter inch thick piece of hardboard and I have cut it to the exact same dimensions as the document. In this case, it's eight and a half by 13. Now cutting this first does several things. For starters, you don't have to have your original document in the shop in order to keep testing it in the frame to make sure that it fits, thereby protecting your document itself. As well, it gives you something to build your frame around as a reference to make sure that you're building it correctly. And lastly, this is gonna end up being our backer board at the end of it all. So this piece is done, this is what we're building the frame around and now you need to choose your stock. And for that, I have milled a piece of three quarter inch walnut. I think I want a fairly narrow frame for her diploma. So I think I'm gonna cut this to one and three quarter inches wide. So I'm gonna cut two slats at that dimension. Well now with those pieces cut, you want to do all of your milling on your stock first before you ever cut your miters. So our next step will be to cut the rabbit. So how deep do we want the rabbit? Well, it's going to be the thickness of our backboard plus the thickness of our glass and the thickness of whatever it is that you're framing. So the glass that I'll be using is 5 64ths of an inch thick and our backboard here is a quarter of an inch. So how do you add them up? Well, for me, I use this little device. So we will just reset it here and all you do, see it says zero, all I do is I pick 5 64 so that's the thickness of our glass, I pull that down to there, and then I choose my next fraction of a quarter inch, there it is one quarter, spin the wheel all the way around, and there's my total, 21 64 8.3 millimeters for those of you who, who like the metric, or 0.328 of an inch. For me, I'm gonna go 21 64 I could probably go a little deeper and go 11 30 seconds actually. So I may do that just to give a little wiggle room. So we're gonna do this rabbit over at the router table, raising our bit ever so slightly, taking light passes. I'm gonna say we're gonna make it a quarter of an inch deep on our piece. That way it's not covering up too much of our document. So a quarter inch deep and 11 30 seconds deep. <laughs> Hopefully you know what I mean. Let's get this cut. I want to put a couple of accents on this frame. I don't want to go too crazy, but I do want it to have a little bit of style. So starting on the outside edge, that'll be the edge without the rabbit. 
I'm gonna measure in say a quarter of an inch and then I'm gonna run a quarter inch deep saw kerf all the way down from end to end. Then I'm gonna skip another quarter inch and then I'm going to cut another saw kerf and then I'll come back and I'll see you. With those kerfs cut, I've measured the dimension of the width of the kerf. Now you'll have to do the same thing for your blade. I don't know what your blade is going to be. And then I have cut pieces of maple that are the same width. Now these are just a little proud, so they're just a little too tight in the slot. So that's okay. I'll probably use a scraper. That would probably be the easiest thing to do, but I'm gonna scrape them down, get them to fit perfectly. And once you're happy with the fit of your maple strips, we can glue them in place. Either way, let's get these maple strips glued in, clamped up, and then we're at a standstill until they dry. So I'll see you when they are dry and we're ready to move on to the next step. Well, those glued in maple strips are now dry and we need to trim them flush to our walnut. Now there's several ways you can do it. You can use a hand plane and then finish it off with a card scraper if you wish. You can sand them down if you wish, but I find that that seems, or that can distort your main frame piece. For me, the easiest way and the fastest way here is to use my thickness planer, and that's what I'm going to do. So to avoid any kind of snipe, I'm going to use some scrap sacrificial pieces of pine that are at least two inches overhanging on either end of our frame pieces, and they will take the snipe, if any, and these boards will not take any. That way I can utilize the entire size of these boards. So I'm gonna get these planed off and then we can carry on with the next step. We now need to consider if we want to put a profile on the inner edges of our frame. So I'm gonna want a 1 8 inch round over. I don't want crazy round overs on this, just subtle, subtle, subtle round overs. So on the inside front face, of each one of our slats, that's the side that your rabbit is cut on, I'm going to put a 1 8 round over along that edge. The outside of the frame can be done after it is assembled, but the inside, the bit will not reach into the corners, so you need to do it now. Well, it's now time to cut the 45s on our frame. We're going to be doing it over the table saw um, with our miter fence. Here is the problem or the mistake that a lot of beginners make. When they measure for their frame, they measure their 45s to the outside edge and that's where they size them. That is going to yield a frame that is actually too large. Your measurement for your 45 comes from the inside of your rabbit. And the reason for that is that your picture or your backer board will be fit in here and you can see here where the miter of the frame is going to uh, join to the side pieces. It's not up here at this upper edge. It's down here at the inside of this rabbit. So just make sure that you're measuring in the right place. I don't think that we need a video here of me uh, going through the sizing and all of that. So I'm gonna get these 45s cut up and then we'll get it glued together. Well, gluing up the frame is really not rocket science. Uh, just use a good frame clamp to get some good adhesion there. Make sure you have a nice even coating of glue on all your pieces. And the biggest piece of advice I can give you in a frame glue up is make sure that you clean up all of your squeeze out. You don't want any, whether it be on the inside of your rabbit or on the top edges of your frame. You will end up with a little bit in the corners. You can't really help that with a frame clamp. It's just the nature of the beast, but um, get as much of the squeeze out cleaned up as you can.
Now, if you did go the extra mile and do these inlays like what I've done here, you may want to assemble the frame with those inlays facing up. That way you can see if there's any misalignment and deal with it um, before the frame dries up because once it dries, it's too late for you to try to realign those pieces. And at this point, you're pretty much at a standstill. Um, these joints have to completely dry up before you can start playing around with it. So I would give it at least overnight. That's where a little bit of patience comes in. So put this aside, go work on something else, or you know what, clean your shop and uh, come back when this is dry. Well, our frame is dry and everything looks great. Um, the only thing is, is that a frame, in my opinion, the glue joint alone is not enough to hold it over time. Should the frame ever drop or that sort of thing, it will break apart. And that's the reason for splines, is to strengthen our corner joints or our miters. Well, isn't it a handy thing that we made a brand new spline cutting jig last week. And we're gonna head over to the table saw now, set it up and cut our spline kerfs in each one of our corners. But before we do that, I want to give a good surface sanding to the front and the back of our frame. Okay, so we have our frame in our spline cutting jig. It's clamped in place with our shop made toggle clamps and I have set the frame so that our rabbit is facing out. That way I can see the height of the blade because that's what we're going to use to set the blade. On my throat insert, I always place a mark here that goes across the insert and that is an indication of the center of my arbor. The reason I have that there is because that will be the highest point of the blade, which means that when I'm setting the blade height, as long as I'm measuring in line with that uh, line that I've placed on the insert, I know that I'm always getting the highest point. I'm not measuring over here somewhere and actually being off. So I've lined up the point of our frame with that line. I'm gonna slide it up close here to our blade and I'm going to raise it to get the height of a spline that I want, making sure that I'm not cutting into our rabbit. So that's a pretty substantial uh, spline right there and I think that's what I'm going to cut. So now I've measured the center of our frame I know that I want a quarter inch wide spline there and all I'm going to do is set the fence and then run this frame through for one pass for each corner to cut the kerfs. And that is essentially the operation of our spline jig. Well, normally when I do splines, I love to do contrasting wood. But with the front of this frame with these delicate maple inlays, and it's just so elegant looking and it looks gorgeous, I don't want to distract from that. So what I'm going to do is same species uh, splines. So I've cut four splines out of quarter inch walnut. Now they will show eventually because there's no such thing as a perfect match for this. So they will give a little bit of contrast, but not enough to take away from the front. So we'll just apply glue on all sides of the spline and we're gonna glue all four of these in place and clamp them up and let them dry. And once we get that done, <laughs> well, once again, we're at a standstill for this project and we can go work on something else because we're gonna have to wait. Also guys, for each one of these splines, make sure, absolutely sure, that you clean out all of your squeeze out. It's very important. Well, our splines are dry and there's several ways that you can trim them flush. You could use a flush cut saw, you could use a flush cut router bit, you could use a sander, you could chisel them off. For me, 
My favorite method is a combination of using the scroll saw to cut them flush with the edges of the saw and then taking them over to the belt sander to give them that last little touch up. So once this is done and these are all trim flush, we're going to do a 1 8 round over on the front and back of all of our outside edges. Well, pretty much the last thing left to do here would be to apply a hanger, place your backer board in your frame, and then of course, decide how you want to hold it in. For me, my absolute favorite way to hold in anything in a picture frame is with brass photo turns. So I will be placing two on each side, just like this to hold the photo in place. And after we apply a finish and a hanger on this, uh, well, that's it, we're, we're done. And there you have it. A custom graduation frame. Guys, this is one of those projects that is all about self-satisfaction. And what I mean by that is there was a need for a certain size frame that was not commercially available. And it looked like you were going to have to give in and get the one that was offered from the university. But lo and behold, you have a skill set and you were able to make something as beautiful as this for next to nothing. The amount of wood that it took to make this frame was negligible. It was mostly three quarter inch walnut and it didn't use up very much of it at that. You saw in the beginning clips how large of a piece or how small of a piece we had um, to make all of it. There really wasn't that much stock there. So these inlays, the inlays, one of my favorite parts about making a frame is adding that contrast, adding that that wow factor, adding those inlays that look as beautiful as what this does. I mean, how many times have you seen a frame like this in a store for like 20, 30, 40 dollars? Um, I'll tell you what, go get some professional portraits taken and look at the prices of the frames that they offer. Go to one of your framing places and see if they have anything even close to this. And I can guarantee you, if they do, it's a very pretty penny. All this really took was a little bit of walnut and some time and some patience. There's a lot of processes that really went on here between routing the rabbit for the glass and the backer board. There was the hand routing. You may have noticed in the video there was a little bit of climb routing too on the frame. Um, I don't mind with small little uh, bits like this to do a bit of climb routing. It gives a much smoother finish on the edge of the frame, a lot less sanding. Then of course, there was the um, using the card scrapers to take down um, our inlays to the proper thickness. And that's just a load of fun. If you haven't used a card scraper or haven't given it a try yet, check out my video on maintaining a card scraper. There's something satisfying about that scrape as it goes across and watching the curly little pieces of wood come off. It's just as satisfying as using a hand plane. And if you guys used a hand plane at all, you know exactly what I'm talking about with that whoosh, that noise as it peels off these thin, perfect strips. Card scraper is exactly the same, a load of fun and a very satisfying tool to use. Guys, this project's been a blast. Truth be told, I absolutely hate making frames. <laughs> I really do. Uh, I've made so many of them over the years that there's, there's not much left in it for me to branch out in and to try something new. Um, a while back on the show, I made a custom frame for my wife with an oval cutout and custom routings. Now that one was a little different and that one was a little more interesting. But a simple frame like this, I'm not a fan of uh, putting it together. I'm not a fan of making it. I'm not a fan of designing it. Um, but what I am a fan of is seeing my youngest daughter happy and when she sees her certificate in this frame, I know it's going to make her proud. Guys, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click that bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. 
It's a good one today. It's not the first frame tutorial I've done on this channel, but everyone's a little bit different. Everyone offers just a little bit of extra information or a little bit of different information. There's always something for somebody to learn. Guys, I hope that you've enjoyed today's content. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're going to try this frame stuff for yourself. And I honestly hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.